First topic of the day, Chris. Buki Betts got paid. Yeah, yeah, he did. How's it make yeah, you did. feel? Uh, annoyed. 12 years, $365 million. While it seems like it is a massive, massive contract, it's really not in the grand scheme of things. It's, it's just it's long. Yeah, it's but a, it's a really day, long He could have gotten $30 million a year from anybody. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and if you look at... If you go back and you look at all of the the big extensions, right? So the previous extension record was three hundred sixty million that was signed by Mike Trout. That included a sixty five million dollars signing bonus. His overall deal was like what four hundred and thirty million dollars? I want to say. I don't. I don't remember the details of that. So, but, but uh, either yeah, way, a, I mean, it was a big deal. It's the biggest deal ever. Yeah, and it was a monster deal. It was massive, and this one was expected to compete with it. Uh, it it did. It did for the most part, um, but you know we're looking at thirty million dollars a year. You know what is this guy going to look like when he gets to be thirty nine, forty years old? Because I mean they're still going to be paying him. So I am curious about it. I I really thought that something like this might hold off until after the pandemic, after all of this stuff goes down, because we're not sure how this is going to affect revenue going forward. And yet we've seen, you know, the monster Mahomes contract. We saw this monster contract. Long term, lots of money. What what do you make of this? Yeah, the sports leagues just assume that as soon as we get this, eventually we are going to get back to uh, a normal lifestyle that looks more like what it used to look like and then what it looks like today. We assume that all markets will come back. We assume that things will continue to roll um, in our country and – with that being said, we're just going to make contracts based on those assumptions. Is it, we talked about this with the Mahomes thing, is it a smart play to, to do these super long-term deals, or is that the only way that you're going to be able to keep these guys? So it just depends. I mean, it's all about safety and security for the, for the player. Here's what we can't have, all right? I don't want to look back seven years from now, virtually halfway through both of these contracts, okay? And both of these guys have way outplayed what we thought they would. All right. They, they, they've maintained the course of uh, the trajectory that we think they're going to go on. Okay. But the average player around them is now making $45 million or in the NFL, maybe $50 million. And they're in the thirties and people saying this contract is an outrage and it has to be fixed. No, 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 no. One of the, one of the reasons that we got this number Today is because seven years ago we gave you a hella good number and we took the gamble that things might not be great back then. And you took the safety and security. This is this is exactly why people thought the GM of the Bulls and the management and the ownership of the Bulls were so wrong to Scotty Pippen. No, no, no. Scotty knew what he was doing when he got that contract and then bitched his entire way through it. Yeah. Okay. It as long as six, seven, eight years into this deal, we get to the back end of it, and these guys aren't crying. It's not fair to me because so many players are worse than I am getting paid more than me. That's the bed you made. I will tell you that LeBron James has figured this thing out to maximize your amount of money. Instead of taking the super max deals, which basically you make the same amount of money, you just have long term, he was signing three- and four-year deals everywhere he went. Or, or a, lot of, knows, a lot of them one-year deals. Yeah, because he knows the cap keeps going up, the cap keeps going up, so the more times I get to sign a contract, the more money I can make, and I'm basically betting on myself to not get hurt or understanding that if all I make is $120 million, the one four-year contract for $30 million a apiece, that's enough to live the rest of my life on and be fine. So... I'm going to keep betting on myself, and by the time that four years is up, now I'm making $40 million. I get 160 for the next one. And if I can get a third one for maybe only two years, but at 50, then then I have almost doubled what I just made. Yeah. And and that's what these guys don't say. But they, it's how do you walk away from $365 million? I mean, if somebody puts that in front of you and says, you have to work for me the rest of your life until you're ready to retire. But you do get to retire whenever you'd like. But but while you're working, you can't work for anybody other than me. Here's three hundred and sixty five million dollars. I'm signing the dotted line. <laughs> as long as I still have as long as I'm not handcuffed to you to where I can't retire and stop working one day, 
I'm just going to say yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that makes so, sense. So I get it. I I just don't want these guys crying foul. And it's not really the players all the time. It's a lot of times the media. It's a lot of times the fans, you know, how is Aaron Rodgers making so much? And, 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 you know, I don't know. You know, Jared Goff making a lot more than him. Like, I, yeah, he, he signed because the deal a long time ago. I can't, yeah. I can't help, I can't help that. You know, Joe Flacco at one point in time was making a lot more money than many, many quarterbacks better than him. Oh I, yeah. I he was, that. he was the highest paid quarterback in the NFL it, for yeah. a, for a little bit of a time there for a brief period, but yes. And, and now, I mean, his money is not even close. It, it no. was just nothing. But at the so time, I do great. think both of these deals are going to look very team friendly on the back end. Pending these guys still have relevancy and still have something to give. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. And I'm I with think you. I think that we, I mean Mookie has the kind of body that you think should be able to play. Now, is he going to play until he's thirty nine? Is he going to finish the contract? I don't I don't know the answer to that. Uh, okay, who knows? But he he's getting paid in the long term. Um, so. Ben jumps in on Twitch. He said, the Angels will still never make the playoffs. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right because <laughs> they can't afford to keep anybody else. Uh, Matt jumps in. He said, they have to give them that long-term deal to keep them during their prime. If they don't want to give them that 10-year deal, then another team will, and they'll bounce. Uh, he said, you got to suck it up for the last three years that they're not great to ensure that you've got them for the period that they are great. No, and I agree with that. That is that is the devil panic. Basically, there's going to be a window of time where they should be making 40 in, in this case. Yeah, but but they're only going to be making thirty, and you're you're hoping that you make that money back that that four year window, you're going to get that extra forty million when you're paying them forty million to do nothing at the back end of the contract because they're just not good. Yeah, no, you're uh, you're right about that. I, I do think they all work out in the end, and everybody kind of gets what they deserve and owe. The LeBron James way of doing it, I think, is. If I was a player of that kind of caliber, I would just keep betting on myself every year unless I was a player of major injury issues. But then no one's giving you a 13-year deal. Like yeah. that's the issue is if you already have signs of being a injury-prone type player, you're not getting a 13-year deal. That, now the owner wants to pay you only four or five years. Hey, and I think – now haven't we talked about this – isn't this some of the hold up for Dak's contract? Doesn't Dak only want a four year deal, and the Cowboys want to lock him up for five, six years? I I think that's it. Or I think I don't know that it it's the, the money around. per. Now, obviously, he has said he wants forty, and he's he hasn't come off of that one penny. But I do think the other part is is he only wants it to be a four year deal because he wants he knows in four years. I'm I'm gonna re up, and I think I my body type I can play another eight years, and if I can play eight, I get two of these contracts. But that second one will be worth a hell of a lot more than the first one. I mean, realistically, could be worth ten million a year more. Yeah, no, it it really could. Uh, Buster I mean, Olney the cap keeps going. They're not giving offensive linemen more money. Okay, the yeah. higher the cap goes, the more quarterbacks are gonna make. That's, yeah, that's that's, that's just the, it's gonna work. That's just running back's not all of a sudden finally gonna get paid. <laughs> Buster Olney, uh, ESPN's MLB. I guess, guru, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Uh, Mike Campion, by the way, said, Dak won't sign for more. That's the holdup. The money has been close. Uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows at this point? Uh, Buster said he was very surprised at this because of all the front office executives in baseball, Andrew Friedman might be the most disciplined, reflexively veering around risk. He's been the blackjack player who never veers from his system, and this deal carries enormous risk given the uncertainty about baseball's financial landscape. It seemed more likely, given Friedman's discipline, that he would wait to see where the salary numbers moved and whether there would be fans in the stands in 21. But the Dodgers obviously can assume more risk than most teams, and when the numbers are this big, it's ownership's call. Uh, the prospect of Cody Bellinger and Betts playing side-by-side side is like teaming Superman and Batman. Yeah, it, it, now, the, now the negative side for the Dodgers is, is positive and negative for their books. Buster Buster is the best beat writer in all of sports and any coverage thing. He knows these teams inside and out better than anybody. And he broke down the Dodgers virtually have no money on their books after 2022 that they can't get out of. And and that that A makes it to where you're basically going to build the rest of the team around him and everybody else's contract goes around him after 2022. Yeah. Um and and that's a lot of flexibility to the I mean, that gives the owners the ability to do that. 
And, and yeah, so if they have a couple of tight years, you're also talking about the Dodgers. There's a few organizations in baseball that have deeper pockets than everyone else. And, and it's just, it's just the way it is. The Yankees, the Red Sox, the Cubs, the Dodgers, probably the Houston Astros that, that might be the list. I mean, I might be forgetting one or two other teams that sometimes are big players, but nobody is consistently year in and year out. We've got the money. We can take the risk. That's why it hurts so bad being a Sox fan. When we, the scouting department did everything right. The drafting department did everything right. They found this kid out of Nashville, Tennessee, and they said, he's going to be a star. He could be the next Ted Williams. They got him in the Fenway early. And he outplayed every expectation you had. And a big market team like the Red. This is what's supposed to happen to the White Sox. This is what's supposed to happen to the Marlins. Okay, this is what's supposed to happen to those teams, not to us. Yeah, not not to the Red Sox. It, it's strange to see it happen for sure. So it is a monster deal. Uh, it's the biggest sports news of the day because I mean it's the day before the season starts, and, and it kind of came out of nowhere. So, yeah, it's a little bit surprising I on the timing. I think it's good for baseball because it it kind of carries us into some positive news as the league gets started tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to see two of the best pitchers in all of baseball tow the mound and throw the rock in a game that actually matters in Garrett Cole and Max Scherzer. Yeah. That, that's going to happen tomorrow night pending something just insane, catastrophic, doesn't go down. Are you uh, You're off work tomorrow, right? I am. I mean, officially, no. I mean, I have to work. I, okay. I, I didn't know if I didn't know if you were day. taking off for. Uh, for so I always day. take off for opening day. I don't know what tomorrow day games are. I think tomorrow is the the big night game, and Friday is going to be the big day game. Let me look here. That's it. Yeah, I'll let you go ahead and check that out before we dive into uh, some NFL stuff. Uh, Joseph wow, Gomez said, "My Yahoo Sports Scores app doesn't have any game slated for tomorrow at all." Other than the game tomorrow night? Oh, somehow it got on. Never mind. Somehow it got on soccer. It's like, what the <laughs> hell? Why doesn't I have the games on? Yeah, tomorrow's just the two night games. That's okay. It. So and then what what's, it'll be what's Friday, Friday that I will not be it'll be Friday that I will not be working. I'm gonna request that we try to do the show early tomorrow, and then I'll miss all the evening games tomorrow, which I'm not happy about. But my Red Sox play in the afternoon, so I'm okay. No, they don't. Shit. They play at six thirty. There you go. That'll be part of it. But tomorrow we'll be going live at 3 o'clock anyway um, because I will be back in the office. So I mean, I won't worry about tomorrow. I mean, yeah. I meant Friday. Friday, yeah. We can uh, we can still go early if you want to. We'll figure it out. Obviously, uh, with this show, we are our own bosses. We can do what we yeah. want But to, fri- so. Friday is the day I take off work. So ever there since they started doing the opening night and then the next day is opening day. And they got I, baseball I, just I, all day. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't work on opening day. Hey, did you see? Uh, I'll get some stuff done in the office that morning, but but by the time game starts, I've got a cold one popped. There you go. There you go. Did you watch? Uh, did you watch any of the NBA game today? No. I mean, it's just I, exhibition. I have, I have worked all day today. I mean, taking it. off work next week, taking some time off, getting vacation in. No, I, I've got zero time to do anything. Now that makes sense. That makes sense. So I I saw a few of the clips on Twitter. Uh, looks fine. Sounded fine. When we, when we finish up, I'll be catching highlights and then I'll be watching it tonight. I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, that's just what, yeah, that's what I'm about to do. No, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, Joseph Gomez on YouTube said Braves with Turner sports. Uh, Mike Campion said, do you think the, the Braves se- are absolutely not a big spender whatsoever? Yeah, absolutely. They let not. guys go all the time for money issues. What they are masters at, which I don't know how they do this kind of voodoo wizardry bullshit. They get guys like Acuna, who should be making $30, $40 million a year, and they get him to sign for an eight-year deal at $20 million. Yeah. How, how the hell that happens, I don't know. He must like it they in do Atlanta. it all the time, and it pisses me off. Well, he just wants to play in Atlanta his entire life, and let's just <laughs> get it locked up. That's horseshit. Yeah. Ben, uh, oh, Mike said, do you think these short seasons favor hitters or pitchers? Um I think it's about the same as, as I don't know usual. that it favors. I really don't know that it favors anybody. I do think it's going to be a little okay. I think it's anybody's ball game. Okay. Yeah. I think bad teams can go on a two week hot streak 
and, you know, win eight games in two weeks. And when you only have 60 games, that's almost a sixth of your season. You, you know, you can, you can kind of catapult yourself up there and, and get yourself in playoff contention when you probably don't deserve to be there um, under normal I, circumstances. I'll you tell you this. It, I, I think that it actually favors pitchers because I think as the season goes on, uh, a lot of times hitters can figure out a pitcher the more that they've seen him. In in this situation, you don't have as many chances at the apple to see some of these guys. So I think it's going to help pitchers more. But obviously, it's it's more who knows. at times you see the pitcher that night. I, I don't know. I don't know that you know if you yeah. play against the you know if you play against Washington, you know seven times as opposed to tw- you know twelve times. How will you see Max Scherzer more? And are you going to hit him better at the end? History hasn't shown that. Yeah, hitters hitters haven't put up better numbers in, you know, September and October than they put up in, you know, June and July. That that's that's a valid point. That's a valid. If that point. was the case, then offensive numbers would go up at the end of the season every year, and they they just don't. And they yeah, they really don't. Uh, ben, it, on, it's pre, I mean, it's pretty even. It's pretty even. Yeah. Ben said on Twitch, uh, "That's what sucks about being an A's fan. Big teams will pick off our great young players. I'm just waiting for Matt Chapman to get stolen from us." He said the uh, the oh. Royals fell into the small market cycle. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And then uh, Joseph Gomez said, "Bowl bowl is all I saw on basketball today." Yeah. Bowl bowl uh, started the game. Came out, dribbled the ball, you know, all the way down the court and shot a three. You know, it, it's weird for any of us to see a seven foot three guy making threes, but yeah, it was pretty interesting. Pretty